Was that it? From the visionary mind of Ang Lee screamed the trailer, to which I wonder if the Oxford English Dictionary would like a word, because whilst Ang Lee might be a visionary, and I can see plenty of arguments either way, I don't think he had much to do with this. Written by the hack behind X-Men Origins, Wolverine might be a better idea. A film that was supposed to be released in 1997 starring Clint Eastwood, which proves Daniel's third law of film criticism. If a film has been in development hell for more than 10 years, just put it out of my misery would be so much better. A dark look into cinema's future would be perfect. Because, plot-wise, there's nothing here that you haven't seen before and done better. You want an over-the-hill assassin being targeted by a younger assassin? Assassins was released in 1995 and got Star Sylvester Stallone nominated for an award. I mean, it was a Razzie, but an award's an award. Or if you like a film about an agent being relentlessly pursued by their own government, then I can recommend the Bourne franchise, as well as a good anti-migraine medication. But I get away from myself. Gemini Man, which has nothing to do with the American action-adventure drama series that premiered on NBC in 1976. Instead, it is about, as you probably guessed by this point, about Will Smith's retiring hitman being pursued by a younger hitman who turns out to be his clone and trained to be his superior in every way. Now there's a lot here that you could work with. Nature versus nurture, the morality of breeding clones purely for combat, possibly sparing real humans from life-changing physical and mental damages, to never again have a mother bury their child, or even the hypothetical of what would you say to a decades younger you. Sadly, there's not really that much debate in this film. I mean, I wasn't exactly expecting Matrix levels of dialogue and debate, but some sort of debate about the morals and ethics would be nice, and whilst I'm working on my wish list to Santa, I would also like some character development, a slightly more original plot, some decent stunt work, a slightly more original plot. How would it be too much to ask for a slightly original plot? I mean, yes, this is still a passable film. Will Smith's boundless charisma is gorgeous. can, and indeed has, carried far worse than this, but if you look beyond the fact that you're getting two Smiths for the price of one and instead realise that much like this year's utterly ghastly Lion King remake, this is not really a film in and of itself, but a tech demo disguised as a $138 million film. I mean, the dropping thing was filmed at an extra high frame rate of 120 FPS, normal screenings run at 24 FPS, modified for 3D, neither of which were in my screen, but even so, I've always found this technique makes films look cheap, and after a while it just made me feel weird. But the main draw of this film is its facial technology, which means that not only can aging film stars now be grafted pretty well onto younger bodies, oh, I did try and find out who was playing young Will's body, but I just couldn't, which does not bode well for the future of film. I mean, with this kind of tech, death doesn't mean that actors stop working, or action stars don't get too old to do action films. The possibility of this tech, once perfected, there were still a few uncanny valley-esque shots here and there, are boundless and incredibly morally dubious. But back to Gemini Man, and we find that its best action scene, a highly inventive motorcycle chase, goes on that touch too long and brought out at least two unintended chuckles from me. Other than that, there's just nothing really here. As a film, Gemini Man is generic and highly predictable. It has bits of cardboard that spout exposition as opposed to secondary characters, and slightly thicker bits of cardboard posing as our leads. It has no intention of taking part in the debates that it could and indeed should provoke, and highly generic action scenes which you've seen done before and better. But this is not a film. It's a glimpse of our highly tedious, death-proof future of cinema. Be afraid. Be very afraid. So I definitely think that you should skip it. But what did you guys think? And which actor would you most like to see be brought back from the dead? Comment below, let me know. I'm Daniel. It's been a dunking. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.